All right, we are back in class. We are continuing assignment six, our text and poster design. I'm going to jump to it right through assignments and scroll down to assignment six. And you'll see along with assignment six, we have some resources. We have a mentorship presentation done by a digital honors student on how to conceptualize type design. goes through the type blocking sketch, how you can modify from existing typefaces, how you can get inspiration from custom type, type work, and then how you can build it on your own. You can give you a little TED talk on it, right? And then they include this wonderful little bonus video from SNL, which I can't recommend enough but I can't put it in a YouTube video without violating copyright. But I definitely recommend you check it out. It's hilarious. And it talks to modifying existing typefaces. All right. The other one is something we'll get into as we finish our poster and something you need to understand for your final exam and for your student learning outcomes for the class. And that's what's called CMYK color separation. It's how digital images get professionally printed. So this goes into it in depth. Because what we are creating right now are RGB uh, channeled images made with light on the computer screen. But those have to get changed in professional printing to ink-based full-color prints, which use cyan, magenta, yellow, and black ink to give you the full reproduction of color. And it does it through what's called halftone dots. And we'll talk about that. And there's different ways it can be done and separated. What you guys will need to know for the final exam is right here. You're going to need to understand these halftone screen angles. So the angles that the dots need to be outputted at from Photoshop or from some other pre-production program in order to print in what are called Gaussian roses. right? And if you don't match these angles, when you print them, they all just line up right on top of each other. You just get mud. So it's, it's how these four different types of film work come together to make a full color image. So we'll get back to that and I'll show you ways you can do that in Photoshop even, but that doesn't have anything to do with our posters. And then the last one is talking about how this is actually a really important media job right now. Uh, figuring out what's called not poster design so much anymore, but key art. Because everything that's streaming, everything that's you can see on your phone, everything that has to be kind of encapsulated on an app-based scroll thing, used to be album cover art, used to be DVD covers, used to be CD covers. Now it's all key art. And key art is always a mix of some pretty straightforward illustration or photo with type design. You know, all this different kind of key art. And if you've noticed on your Netflix, on your Hulu, your streaming accounts, that key art changes every few months. There is a lot of it being created, you know, for each new season to keep people interested. Old movies get new key art so that they attract new eyes. Just like movies get like indie poster releases from Mondo or from like limited sources. And I have friends that do, you know, key art and poster art for like HBO shows, for, for movies. And that is all in the assignment. So we talked about Stranger Things, but then these are also two artists I know that do this kind of poster design for a living, right? Whether it's political, whether it's for movies, and you can check out their, their websites and their work. But it's all about getting the type to support your image. So to catch us up, started with a text blocking sketch to acknowledge what we're trying to do. And then we, I went in, and with those videos from the work from home day on Monday, I did these in Vector.com. And from Vector.com, I was able to get SVGs, right? So now if I wanted to work on it more, I could open that up in Illustrator. But I wanted to show you an even easier way to work with it. So if I open with Illustrator one of these SVGs, 
Another way we can work with it is to simply use the type tool in Adobe Illustrator. So the type tool is the big T, just like if you're in um, Google Slides or something, you start with making a big text box and it fills it with what's called Latin text. That's just a default. You're going to put in the word you want. So I'm going to do in OK, uppercase in, lowercase O, uppercase K, right? Then under properties, you might have to scroll to see it. You'll see all of the kind of the word processing options. I can set the point size to be quite a bit bigger just so I can see it. Because if I try to grow it like I would a vector, it will only grow the text box. It won't grow the, the lettering, right? Because this is now still locked into a lettering tool. But if I click on that type tool in layers, then I am also able to select it and find a typeface that I want to modify from. And Arial Black is a pretty good one for what I'm doing. So I'm going to do it that way. Just put it there. And then I'm going to do it. I'm going to duplicate it while it's still a type tool. So command, go ahead and use the type tool, just like a word processor. Command C, and then command click, and then command V. And then this is going to be the top. So now I have, I'm just really simplifying this. I'm going to take out all this stuff. Now I just have two type tools, right? Now the, the trick is, how do I convert this into a vector? And before I convert it into a vector, what kind of things might be helpful? Well, what's nice is before it's a vector, I can play with the overall kerning of it. That's the space in between the letters. And I can do that by holding down Option and then using my arrows. So I can play with the space they have. And I'm trying to match kind of the TikTok uh, logo type, which has pretty close kerning. And this is all, everything I'm doing here is also true in Photoshop, but we want it as a vector. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is see if there are any fonts associated with this typeface. Fonts are variations to the typeface. So Arial Black is this typeface. The fonts are underneath. Fonts would be things like bold, italic, um, outlined, underlined. This Arial Black is already a form of Arial, which is a very common typeface that's already like extremely bolded. So it doesn't have any additional fonts. But what I can do is once I can see it, then with the type tool, I can right click on it. And I want to get to where I can right click and see create outlines. Right now that's blurred out because I'm actively editing the type. So if I go to the layer and I just click on it, I'll see a blue line underneath it. That means it's not activated in the type tool, so I can right click on it and say create outlines. This is like an instant vectorizing. And now I have those anchor points. What's so amazing about that is now I can edit it just like I would any vector. So I can stretch it, enlarge it, get something I like. And I can use my small selection tool. This is where it's a little bit better than vector.com. And I can select individual letters instead of all of them at once. And when I select the individual letters and then use the large selection tool, I can do things like rotate them. And I can use things like the pencil tool to modify them. I can move anchor points, of course. I can round them out. You know, just making just slight variations. I can even do it to the whole thing. And you'll see type design like this sometimes. Something kind of interesting about that. I think it's readable. Let's maybe do it a little bit small. less.
I'm just going to round everything out just a little bit. And then, of course, I could use the pencil tool, which you can't do in vector.com in as comfortable a way. And I could redraw as long as I start on the path and end on the path. Right. All right. Now that I've done that for knock, let me try it for Nick. And the one thing I think I want a little bit of a slant. This is something we haven't gone, gone through before. So if I select just that letter and I right click and I transform, I don't get distort, I don't get skew, I don't get warp, but I get this thing called shear. Shear is kind of like distort. It works very well with, with type. And you, it's just a really weird interface. So just play with these angles and see what they do right to the image. So maybe I want something like that, a 9 degree, 338, then I can apply it to this one too. Whoops, small selection, large selection to get to the K, right click, transform, shear, and it will remember my settings, right? And then because it's its own, I can use my arrow key and adjust manually the kerning and the spacing, like top to bottom. Okay, I like that. That's kind of interesting. I kind of regret curving that top. <laughs> and if I needed to, I could always just redraw this. Clean it up. Remember, with the pencil tool, you can always set it to be more smooth, too, just by double clicking. OK, so I've got knock. Now I want Nick to match. Well, I'm going to make one small change. This is another trick that's very helpful. You can use, under the small selection tool, you can use the lasso tool, and you can select individual anchor points. And then you can drag them down together so that they move together. Instead of just dragging one, I can drag them both down. So that can be very helpful. Do I like that? Kind of. Let me show you that again. So what I would do is use the lasso tool, just select these two anchor points, then use the small selection tool. I'm going to get it so I can see the whole thing. And then when I drag one of them down, it will do both of them. I think to there. All right. Now, pretty simple. How can I match this with Nick? Well, I'm just going to click on Nick to review. I see that blue line. It's still a type tool. So I need to right click and say create outlines. And then all I'm going to do, instead of trying to recreate the in and the K, I'm just going to delete those. Right? Then I'm just going to take the I and I'm going to do a rotate on it. Maybe not a rotate on it because the O works for a rotate, but the I wouldn't in the same way. I'm going to do the the transform shear, and it's going to remember my settings, right? Then I'm going to make it bigger, that large selection tool. And then I'm going to just copy these two. Copy that, hold down Command and Shift, copy both of them, Command C, Command V. I did everything, but I can erase the O. <laughs> Small selection tool, delete this. And then we're going to make this bigger to fit. And then we're going to adjust the kerning around it. And because this is now a vector, right, I can click on its anchor points and I can round it all out, which I'm going to do. And then I can adjust, hand adjust the kerning of both of these. What is kerning? It is the space between the letters. For something like an I, you're going to have, just by general type design, you're going to have a little bit more generous space around the I because the I takes up less space than the O takes up. The way it was explained to me by my type design teacher is it's like you're dunking the letter in a glass of water. And whatever amount of water the letter displaces, you want that, you want to have the same amount of water around it, <laughs> right? So if it's a big letter, you have closer kerning. If it's a small letter, you have more generous kerning. 
capitals automatically space themselves. 